Hello everyone and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul with RP1 series in Kerbal Space Program 1.3.1 and in the previous episode we managed to get our probe to the moon and smash it into the moon. It was the Lunar Impactor mission which means we still have the Lunar Flyby mission hanging out and we need to do that. Uh, but first we did get some science, lots of science, and we should spend our science points. Uh, on the same principle as we did the supersonic flight stuff here, uh, we'll unlock uh, early uh, saw rocket engines mainly for the upgrade points and probably this tier as well. Um, yeah, that seems reasonable. I really don't like solid motors, but uh, eventually they'll be useful for septrons. Even the uh, these sorts, the sergeants and all, maybe. I mean, they, they're a little bit uh, long-winded. They take a while, uh, so maybe not so much. But anyway, uh, we've got that, and I suppose... I suppose human rated EDL, uh, micro landing struts may be good. Uh, I still haven't put tweak scale in, which probably for the landing struts I ought to. But uh, anyway, yeah, I think uh, as far as all the technologies are concerned, it's all human stuff. It looks like uh, we can't just have our space program be full of, you know, non-human things. I don't know. We could have just stuck with probes, but okay. Um, so we'll unlock that. 1960 order rocketry seems like a good idea. And uh, basically there's a wall here. We have to upgrade the R&D building before we get past there. So let's just get crew survivability because that's required for basic capsules. And also required for basic capsules is early human space flight material science. Um, so let's research that. And sure enough, we have just enough for early human spaceflight electronics research, which gives us nothing here. Um, and this gives us nothing, and that gives us nothing. But this ultimately allows us to get the first RTGs and uh, all this other stuff. So we might as well grab it. Actually, this one, once we unlock this, we can get this. I don't know why interplanetary communications is dependent on early human spaceflight electronics because we haven't made any human interplanetary missions. <laughs> so uh, this seems flawed. I, I don't agree. This is because it happened, ha happened you know, it, didn't, it wasn't even that chronologically dependent. Uh, so yeah, I, I just don't like that connection and dependency, but whatever. We got the upgrade points. I'm going to spend it on R&D because we've got a big backlog of R&D here. Lots of R&D backlog, so let's try and clear that up a little bit more. Let's and let's get to 32. Okay, we're spending all of it on R&D. Uh, we do need to increase our build points, and now we have some funds. I would like to spend that mainly after we do the mission. Um, though I think we can pick up some of this other stuff. But again, the deadline of a year is so tough. Uh, it my my risk averse self does not like committing to that kind of thing knowing the kind of failures that we get with test flight and i have a planned expenditure too uh, i'm still not going to be doing any tooling of tanks we're just gonna stick to atlas i mean why not i mean atlas you can't go wrong with atlas really um uh, it, it crimps on my creativity a bit but atlas is a solid rocket and the tooling cost is uh, just annoying to me so um, I mean I accept that tooling costs happen but if you've got an Atlas rocket why tool something else so I mean I guess my I'll just accept that I'm not going to be building a whole lot of launchers in this but um, yeah I'm going to unlock the RD-0105 which is an extremely efficient kerosene oxygen upper stage um, actually, the Vernier is more efficient than the main engine for some reason. 316 vacuum ISP. But it costs 90,000, which is rough. So, yeah. But uh, after you unlock, it's only 250 compared to 150 for the AJ-10. Hopefully, it'll be more reliable. I have no idea. But it has a really long burn time. I mean, I've been told that uh, the Soviet engines are more reliable I, I suspect that this is mainly because they never admitted to engine failures. Um, they had plenty of rocket failures, except for the very first year of uh, spaceflight. 
the Soviet rockets had a worse record than the American rockets, even though the American rockets had like two separate lines, the Thors and the Atlases, and ultimately the Titans. The Soviets were only using the R-7 rockets, uh, except uh, eventually they got uh, Cosmos in. But um, yeah, they were focused on the R-7 rockets, but their failure rate was much higher. So, so yeah, but apparently uh, they, their engines are more reliable. And uh, the burn time, though, is nice. Uh, the burn time here is 7 minutes and 20 seconds, which is way more than what the AJ-10 can manage. So that's going to be good. By now, you've already heard that my voice is not in the best shape, and that's why I've had a sort of delay in making more videos. Um, so hopefully it's going to get better, but this is how it's going to be for a little bit. Uh, so we spent on that. Um, I feel like I'll commit to the Lunar Impactor and Lunar, lunar Orbiter contracts, but we're going to... Uh, retain the money necessary to uh, cushion the blow if we fail the missions. So that's going to be a thing. So Lunar Impactor and Lunar Orbiter. We're just gonna go ahead and I've got the maximum number of contracts. Lots of funds but again we have to retain them. Uh, I'm going to uh, spend some money increasing our build rate. So let's do that. I feel like I can get to one build point a second. Okay, and now let me talk to you about my design. Well, first of all, I think it's prudent to queue up an extra Lunar Atlas IV, and because it worked, we did impact the moon. So we should get one more of these just in case as a backup. Note that the build time is now 37 days um, because we basically doubled our build rates, so that's excellent. And so we'll get one more of these. But now we also have Lunar Atlas V. So the difference is Lunar Atlas V has the RD-0105 here. It's tucked in a little bit so that we can use the same fairing size. And it's got these weird verniers, but it so happens to just manage to fit in here. Uh, we're using hydrazine on the RCS thrusters, but this tank can be just a normal tank too, not high pressure, so much lighter. And we can have the, uh, this tank here is the hydrazine. We've got cross feed on this payload fairing so that the hydrazine can be used for the thrusters down here and otherwise we are retaining the same avionics unit that we had on the AJ-10 stage before and uh, yeah and then this is all the same uh, now you guys mentioned that uh, toggle power might be what extends the panels on here I doubt it um, toggle power almost never does anything useful in my experience uh, but we'll try it out so um, we'll just try it out. And so this is the main one. And uh, whereas the one kilonewton thruster version could manage the flyby and impactor contracts, uh, this will be necessary for orbiter. And that is because you can see after the Atlas gets us into orbit, we're below 1.5 tons. So it should be able to get this into orbit, barring engine failures, of course. Um, then this has 3,642 meters per second. And then the, not the Explorer, the Pioneer has 696 meters per second to make orbit around the moon. So that is the hope. And hopefully this engine is going to be relatively reliable. I mean, it does have that long burn time. So hopefully, you know, we'll see, we'll see. Along the way, we are going to finish Mission Control's upgrade so that we can do plotting properly, right? A maneuver nodes and everything. Um, you know what? Stop warp. I would actually like the Lunar Atlas V first. Okay, here we go. Throttle up. SAS on. And ignition. And launch. Okay. Okay, passing through the speed of sound, approaching max Q, you can feel some wobbles, but we're going okay. Alright, booster engine set. Well, looking nice and smooth, our apoapsis is pretty good. I'll probably want to drop the fairing first.
first and get the actually just this entire stage be good ahead of time. We don't want to ignite the RD-0105 just yet until we're ready to go to the moon. It does prevent me from seeing the Delta V though. Okay, coming up on the end of this burn soon. And shut down. 258 by 192 will be good enough. All right, uh, separation of the fairings. And I'd like uh, that separation first with the RCS. All right. Okay, good. We don't need this rendezvous planner anymore. RCS forward. Excellent. We've got proper RCS thrusters that are working. Uh, let's check that toggle power thing. Be careful not to select anything else. Mm. Uh, it doesn't seem to be extending the solar panels. And once again, as usual, it doesn't seem to be doing anything useful. So, yep, yeah, that is what it is. Now, we do have regular flight planning. And maybe somewhere... No, 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 no. We've got so many orbits already. We're already so cluttered, we haven't even gotten anything done. All right, add a maneuver. Oh, we could have just probably continue. Well, we're a little bit past that. No, well, we could have probably continuously burned. Okay, what are the parameters that we need to pay attention to? Just fly by the moon within 5,000 kilometers, impact the moon, and we need want a stable orbit, collect some science, periapsis, reasonable numbers. Okay. So when we add a maneuver here, let's just verify. We're going to get into an orbit. It doesn't have to be a very tight orbit. In fact, it's better if it's not. That only costs 322. And then an apoapsis will bring the periapsis down and crash it into the moon. Now, the catch here is, are we going to have communication at periapsis? If we don't, we might want to do this earlier, but we can. It seems like we can. So, okay. It looks good to me. Now one downside is that we do have boil off. So the liquid oxygen is boiling off right now. And we have to wait a whole hour. So let's just see what um, Mechjab has to say about that. We need 3,143. We got 3,600. It should be okay. Only a one minute burn time. So it's going to be tough for me to switch off the engine at the right time. But then we can use the RCS, the hydrazine we've got up here in order to do the fine adjustments. Okay, how's our communication situation? Through the burn. Well, we're passing by the west coast here, so we'll have good communication through the entire burn. That's fine. Here we go again. We've had plenty of these moments with the AJ-10. And this is a fresh engine. We have no data units. Zero. Mean time before failure, 73 minutes. Okay. Uh, throttling up. And ignition. Well, it's a good start. For a shutdown, I'm going to focus on the moon. And hopefully I can time it, but it's going to be tough. Oh, well, that's that's good enough. I will definitely take that. Okay, so RCS forward. That should be good enough. All right. Well, it seemed to be recharging before. It's not recharging now, though. Okay, well, if we're pointed directly at the sun like this, we're getting it. Okay. All right. That's good enough. I want to keep this stage if we can. So the flyby contract should be done. Yep. Yep. Flyby is good. Boy, this seems like a breeze compared to all the other experiences we've had so far. One thing I have learned is that RCS is generally not designed for long continuous burns like this. The nozzles aren't cooled, so they have very heat resistant materials, but 
but this sort of thing is uh, actually these these have little rings around them. Maybe they did do have uh, cool nozzles here. Okay, that's the end of that hydrazine. I've got to remember about the signal delay. Well, we are in orbit. And let's keep it to that. That seems convenient enough. Any interesting science? Analyze telemetry. Yeah. Mm, transmit. Log radiation. Just above the lowlands. Ooh, we could get a lot of science like that. Okay, well, if we pass by a different biome, we can get that. Um, it's checking for stable orbit, and then we'll have fulfilled lunar orbiter uncrewed. And then the last thing will be impact the moon, but we can get some science before that. Good to have it uh, rotating when it doesn't have a connection, actually. Just in case we're in a bad orientation. It's actually going to have a drop in power anyway, because the sun is going behind the moon. Well, we might have to scrap the other two lunar atlases unless they give us another contract that they can be applied to. Um, high over... We've already done this particular lunar ocean. But was it high over or low over? I think it was high, both of them. Just above Mare Crisium. Excellent. More science. Major crate. Well, it's high over, it doesn't matter. We'll try one more pass. Interesting, in this direction it's still recharging. Oh, we haven't done just above the lowlands? I'm shocked. Okay, uh, we're going for one more pass. I think we might crash it into this um, Sea of Serenity, Mare Serenitatis. It'll be pretty steep, but it's the Mare that we are best suited to impact into. And we'll have communication. I want to say this is Mare Crisium, but I'm not sure. Seems like it must be. And then, so we want to impact this one. And you can see it's going to be pretty sharp, but it's the best option. As far as getting science is concerned. Okay, so that will be how it goes. The moon thankfully doesn't rotate about its axis very quickly, so I don't think uh, eight hours is going to change much. Yeah, it's fine. Let's get ready to do the science though. Pin that up there. It's still high over. Just above. Here we go. Analyze. Transmit. Log radiation. Transmit. Radiation's the big one. Magnetic. Okay, last chance. Toggle power? No. How about if I decouple and toggle power? How about that? And toggle power. No, no, no. Oh well. Uh, we did impact the moon. Did it, did it hold on, close? Uh, yes, yes. All missions successful. Wow, that's quite a thing to finally see, isn't it? Lunar flyby, orbiter, impactor, same mission, done. Let's go back to the Space Center. Well, now I feel somewhat underprepared because I figured that those three missions, especially the lunar orbiter bit, would take like the entire episode or something. So let's scrap this. Um, we'll keep the Lunar Atlas IV that we've already been building. Who knows, we could send it on uh, some interplanetary mission or something. Well, yeah, it's got the communications, right? Because Pioneer 5 has long-range communications. We could send it into uh, interplanetary space. Not to another planet, but into interplanetary space and then tell us some science about that. Um, we could do some of these 
these more trivial contracts. Nav sap payload. And they've given us lunar impact or orbiter and landing. Oh, landing. But we could do it again. We could do these things again. Nothing wrong with that. If they gotta keep giving us the contracts, we can keep milking it. They they did plenty of lunar imp uh, impactor attempts, right? I mean, Ranger uh, seven, eight, nine. I forget if six was totally successful. I don't think it was, but definitely seven, eight, and nine. Plenty of lunar orbiters, you know. They've they've given us a Venus flyby and Mars flyby option, but we we really don't have the comms for that. I feel like it's important at this point to make sure that we upgrade the R&D building. It's really pathetic that the research science limit goes from 25 to only 50 for 500,000 and the upgrades get really ridiculous down the road. I know um, we did, we started a um, RP1 career on Twitch, but we started it in an advanced state because we already had an RP0 career. And so we decided to start it at 1985 with technologies unlocked and our existing funds and science and all that and found out that the R&D building the final upgrade cost 10 million so like geez so let me just make sure that this is yep it's upgrading 309 days so yeah we do have some more science to spend and I'm eager to get interplanetary communications so let's get these and early power generation, the solar panels could do some work, so, yeah. And RTGs, well, those are, I mean, look at the cost, 10000 I don't know. That's some expensive stuff. I'd hate to see the rollout cost on that. Probably horrible. And how much does it provide? Nine charge per hour. So that's, what is it, 0 0.0025 per second? Is, it, uh, is that 2.5 watts? I think it's 2.5 watts, which, does it say here? Very low overall efficiency and power generation. I believe that. Yeah, that, that doesn't sound like much right there, 9 per hour. And then these RTGs eventually, well, they jump to small nuclear fission reactors, but we don't have any of those. And then there's these snaps. These are 0.04 per second, 40 watts. I mean, obviously we'll need those for Jupiter and all, but we can stick to solar panels, uh, solar panels for now. I really want the science. Maybe I should uh, keep my science for when we get the R&D upgrade. I think that's probably for the best. Time to do some upgrade point stuff though. Those and how about how about we get to 50 science? Oh wait, that goes to this measure. Gotta move human rated EDL up. Lunar rage communications is sort of a joke because we're just gonna put the Pioneer probe on everything. <laughs> we're gonna have a little lander built around the Pioneer probe. Um, orbital rocketry. Crew survivability. Yeah, I think this is the order of operations. That, to me, looks like about three years. Let's spend some more upgrade uh, points here. Well, that's a bit better. Construction times. I'd like to build an atlas a month. Would be good. So that means we're currently doing it in 40 days. Um, so about 1.33 build points. Mind you, we haven't picked up any contracts, so we could, you know, get some funding like that. Okay, let me see what I want to do. Okay, well, I've got an interesting situation here. I decided to unlock the probe core option on the procedural avionics, but I'm definitely regretting that now, um, because, well, the cost is off the scales 11,669.9 and I guess if I decrease utilization it'll decrease the cost by quite a lot okay so right there was 100 percent 3,000 though that's pretty darn expensive for the control of 0.6 tons and this is annoying and really makes me want to stick to the Pioneer 5 right I mean Pioneer 5 and then using stuff like the the upper stage cores instead. 
Yes, they have higher power requirements, but they're a lot cheaper. I mean, if if you can manage 30 watts during uh, time warp versus 3 watts, 30 watts isn't that bad. So yeah, I'm regretting unlocking the probe core option on the procedural avionics. Okay, so I think what I'm going to do is try out all the things. At least we're going to pick up this early weather satellite contract and do it with the Aldebaran rocket, though this time we've replaced the AJ-10 with the RD-0105, so hopefully he'll be more reliable. Uh, so let's pick that up, and we are also going to pick up this early navigation satellite contract, uh, so 60 units of NAVSAT payload, pick that up. Um, I want to try the geosynchronous satellite, well, geostationary satellite, so we have to get to a zero degree inclination, very tight apoapsis and periapsis, but it's giving us two years to do that. And we just need 27 units of ComSat payload, and the completion amount is very nice. So let's pick that up. And um, I'm going to build another Lunar Atlas 5, and we are going to do this again, I guess. So let's pick that up. And Lunar Impactor uh, seems, ooh, uh, let me just read the fine print, right? I think uh, that's all normal, okay. Mm -hmm. And can we pick up Lunar Orbiter as well? Uh, yeah, I think we have enough room in the contracts for that too. And why not? So we've got a lot of the, that stuff now contracts rolling in and if we take a look I've already got the required rockets in the build queue the only one a piece so this is the Aldebaran red red because we've got the RD0105 on it and uh, that's the weather one that's in 17 days Aldebaran red and nav that's in 17 days after that and then the lunar atlas 5 and then the geosat atlas red but altogether, it's going to take a relatively low amount of time. Uh, rollout time is extra. And of course, these are going to be expensive on the rollout too. Uh, no fixing on that. So, but anyway, we've got all that stuff queued up. Let's try out this weather satellite contract first. As we're rolling out, we are completing entry, descent, and landing, the technology. And we'll be on to 1959 orbital rocketry in 1963. So, if you're keeping track, that's how it's going. Alright, let's review exactly what we have to do here. First of all, we've got 80 units of weather sat payload there. And early weather satellite says it's got checkmarked the amount that we have. We need to get between 606 and 739 kilometers. So we're going to go pretty steeply. And uh, we've got a lot of thrust weight ratio to do that with. We have to get relatively circular, eccentricity 0.01, and we need to aim for an inclination of 48 to 58. Now, we've got a lot of delta V to work with, so that's not a problem. Also, I put a lot of RCS for this stage. Uh, that's that RCS tank there. That's uh, 80 units of hydrazine. Ignition. And launch. Two of the Atlas booster engines here. They have been upgraded. A little bit of fin wiggliness with Smart ASS. Of course, we're still very much collecting data on the RD-0105. Lots of work left to do there. Okay, let's go more horizontal. Periapsis is... Oh, sorry, apoapsis is shaping up nicely. That's within the range. It said 606 by 739. And we've got that. Inclination has to be between 48 and 58. We need to do a little bit more on the inclination, but it's looking pretty good right now. Uh, staging. Okay, RCS on. And we will want to go to a zero pitch. Let's get the fairings off now. Come on. Fairings. I don't want to ignite the engine yet. Don't mess with me. So this is what we have up here. The hydrazine tank. Extra power just in case. Uh, especially for later missions. Uh, with the same system. The weather sat payload. 
and of course the avionics. Uh, the stage time for this, as we have two tanks of kerosene and oxygen here, yeah, uh, is 2 minutes and 42 seconds. Okay, that should be good enough. Let's throttle up. And ignition. Uh, okay, well, ignited. Uh, it's... I don't know why it's red. <laughs> it's the right thrust and it's the right ISP. Even when Russian engines fail, they don't really fail. It says failed to ignite. <laughs> I don't know. What are we gonna do? We're definitely not gonna... Oh, it's probably the Vernier. It's the Verniers. The Verniers failed to ignite. That's fine. Okay, just hanging out here at Apoapsis. I think we really only have RCS control over our pitch right now. Oh, a little bit high on the Apoapsis. Uh, actually, it's still within range, I think. And the eccentricity? Uh, it looks good. All right. We had a good shutdown then. Maybe we can use the RCS to deorbit it after we get the contract done. Because I don't really want it hanging out. We don't have long-range communication on this either. And eventually it'll run out of power. Okay, orbit confirmed. And early weather satellite is done. So let's go retrograde. Not that we got paid very much for it. It was actually more on the advance than on the actual payment. Okay, retro. As you can see, it has a reasonable amount of hydrazine to change its orbit, so I think this is a good uh, satellite delivery system for small satellites in low Earth orbit. Okay, and we'll just use up the hydrazine, and that should be a pretty convincing, convincing explosion. Let's see. Going over Europe right now. Now we over Australia. Um, not quite there yet. We're headed over there, but we're over the Indian Ocean. So no fireworks for the Australians. No Skylab. Well, it's tiny. Okay. Engine's gone. And there it all goes. All right. Oop. Okay, very good. Back to Space Center. So it turns out that the key to success in this is to avoid using the AJ-10 as much as possible. I don't know, uh, but maybe maybe the RD-0105 will come to bite us um, next time. But I think I think I'll uh, call it here because we had two successes, and I don't want to tried my luck too much. We know what we're going to be doing next time. Let's get some some extra R&D points here. I think we can bump that up to point two finally. I think it's reasonable to assume that one Lunar Atlas 5 or another will be able to fulfill the three lunar contracts and we can build them once a month. Okay, basically point two five science a day. Let's keep it there. Uh, so we've got some science chugging, and we know what we're going to do next time. We'll toss up that uh, NAVSAT and see if that works, and then attempt a Lunar Atlas 5 again, and then attempt to put a satellite into geostationary orbit. So with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.